Oh man, I can't wait to try out these new cool tractor ramps. Make um, make getting your tractor on ramps much easier, right? Rhino gear. It says just line it up your tires and drive on up. doing Duff here out here with my Husqvarna TS 242 XD hard to believe but we have just crossed the 50 hours of use mark on my on my mower so that means it's time to do an oil change an oil and filter change um, right around the 10 hour mark I changed the um, the oil but not the filter and to get access to the filter, you need to kind of slide this little plastic fill panel out. You just kind of um, pull it up. There is a little push pin down here that um, ideally you, you would pull out, but I just kind of I just kind of ignore it and just pull it out over the push pin. So the important parts changing the oil on this um, tractor is the oil filter. This is the oil release right here, and here is your fill and where you check your, your engine oil. One um, nice thing about the um, Husqvarna, Husqvarna TS24XD, and maybe all Husqvarna's do this, I don't know. This is my first one. But right inside the hood, it has a complete uh, part list for normal wear items, you know, blades, belts, air filter, spark plug, oil filter, and oil, and even keys. So. Yeah, you don't have to really go hunting to find the correct part numbers for stuff, which is nice. So what I need to do here first is I'm going to drain the oil. And to do that, I have to go get the little little tube deal that goes over here. And uh, we'll get draining. Okay, I got my little tube. This comes with the tractor. So the way this works is you put this, and be careful if you just ran the tractor because this is your uh, exhaust is going to be hot. So be careful there. Um, you attach your tubing, and then I have my oil catch pan down here, and you just turn this fitting loose, and oil should begin to flow. Here it comes. Yay. All right, there we go. Okay, so I will be um, letting this oil drain for a little while, and once it's done, we'll move on to step two. This takes a little while to drain, so I remember last time I did this too, I kind of rigged something to keep this um, this tube in place, so I don't have to just sit here and hold it the whole time. Although it is actually acting like it's almost done, so. One thing I did differently this time that I don't believe I did last time is I forgot to loosen the oil-filled plug. So when you do that, you can have almost like a vacuum situation. As soon as you loosen this up, the air pressure helps the oil to drain quicker. So yeah, loosen this up before you get started. All right, that, that actually made a big difference. It's, uh, it looks to be pretty much drained already. Just clean some of the shit out of the way. Okay, so we're gonna close the oil drain valve. And you wanna make sure that that is uh, pretty, pretty tight because you don't want oil leaking, all right? All right, I think we're good to go. Let's take that off. All right, so now when I take this oil filter off, unfortunately, it's going to probably be a mess. I don't know a way to do this without having a lot of oil drip down here. To, to get it loose, got my oil filter wrench. All I gotta do is get it moving. There we go. The rest I should be able to do by hand. All right, let's see. There she goes. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how to do that without making a freaking mess, guys. Have your paper towels ready, I guess. Filter is off and leaking all over the place. I'm sure someone in the comments will give me the proper way to make sure you don't get oil everywhere. I mean, there's a little splashdown area there, but there's, it's not like there's enough space to get a, a pan under it. I guess, well, you know what I guess I could do? I could probably... If I had the right kind of funnel, I could get a funnel under there, I guess, to catch 
a lot of that, so maybe next time that's what I'll do. I'll learn my lesson. But for now, I'm just going to wipe up a lot of a lot of oil. Here's my replacement oil filter for this Kawasaki motor. Part number 49065721. I bought a three-pack off of uh, Amazon. So um, I'll include the link in the description to these. I guess I can dump the, that oil out. Same part number as the original. So I'm going to take a little bit of this, my spilled oil, which I have quite a bit of, obviously, and just um, coat the rubber gasket. It's something I've always uh, done with oil changes. Always was told that was a good thing. I'm going to spin it on by hand. Get it as tight as I can by hand. Okay. And then I'm going to grab my oil filter wrench and maybe go another quarter turn or so. If I can get it on here. Feels good and snug. We got some more oil to wipe up. All right, it is on there. So now we need to add oil. Now, if I remember correctly, uh, when I did this uh, the first time, when I just changed the oil, it took about two quarts. And um, there's another weird thing. When you check the oil level on this tractor, you're not supposed to actually screw the cap back in. You're supposed to have the cap loose for some reason. And I am on a incline right now, so I need to get off this incline to accurately measure the oil level. But I'm going to put um, at least a quart in now, uh, get off here, and just push it back to uh, level ground. Yeah, see, I have this funnel here. I could probably, yeah, I could have gone just like this under the filter and caught a lot of that. So, uh, yeah, next time. If you don't want to make such an oily, oily mess like I did, uh, get, a, get a funnel like this and stick it underneath the filter as you're backing it off. Okay, so I got 1030 oil again, even though the sticker says you can get 10, uh, 10 W30 oil. Um, the manual for the tractor actually says to get to 10 w, 1030, not 10 W30. It specifically says that, although the sticker says 10 W. So... You know, up to you, but I'm, I'm going with uh, what the manual says. This is non-detergent. I, I don't know. Supposedly, if you use the 10W, there's more of a chance of leaking, I guess, is, is what I read. But if that's the case, then why would they have it on the sticker? I, I don't know. All right, so we got one quart on. I think I can just push the tractor off of these uh, weird ramps. Parking brake off. Let me close that sort of. Okay, it's off. Let's just roll right off. There we go. Okay, we are now on more or less flat ground. It actually, it actually says right on the uh, sticker there that the oil capacity is 64 ounces. And uh, 60, last time I checked, 64 ounces is two quarts, right? So we're going to put in probably seven eighths of this. Second, second jug, and uh, see where we're at. Okay. I've never had a um, a situation where you you didn't tighten or fully insert the the uh, the dipstick to check the oil level. It's, it's kind of weird. That kind of looks like it's full to me. Yeah, it's right on it. Okay, good. Nice. Let's wipe down some of that spilled oil again. That makes the paint look nice and shiny, right? Okay, so now I'm going to start it up and just make sure I don't observe any leaking going on around the filter, around the oil filling, oil fitting, because uh, oil leaks are bad. good no leaks just taking a quick look at the air filter that does not look bad at all that looks pretty clean still it's good so now I just need to put the little fill plate back on 
And I left a little fill plate back up there. All right. Just kind of line these tabs up and push down. That's kind of it. Put your trunk down or your hood and you are good to go, man. Oil change complete, oil and filter change complete. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up. My first oil and filter change on my Husqvarna TS242X. <laughs> XD, XD. I don't know why T was going through my head. Yeah, straightforward, not difficult. And if you use a funnel underneath the oil filter when you're taking it off, you'll be able to save yourself a lot of mess, unlike I, I did. Probably the next maintenance that you'll see me doing on this is changing the, the blades. I have not changed the mower blades yet. They are beat up, but they are still cutting okay. So um, if it's not broke, I'm not gonna fix it until the, the cutting performance uh, is affected. It's still been cutting quite well. So overall, I've been very, very happy with the tractor. I, I have had some people question um, my finding that the the uh, locking differentials appear to always be locked. Some people said that when they were going slow that they didn't see the same behavior that I did, where like I would be doing turns and it would be ripping up the, the turf. So I don't know guys, maybe just because it's sandy soil here, it, it, it's worse than if you were on a, you know, like uh, a lawn in the Northeast or something. The soil here is very, very sandy, so it's very easy to rip it up. So take it for what you, take it for what you want, but um, I really overall like the tractor a lot. So if you guys found this video interesting, please give it a big thumbs up if this is your first time visiting the channel. Please consider subscribing. If you're going to subscribe, you hit the notify bell, which is up over there, I think. I think I moved it over there last time I checked. And uh, that's all I have for you for now. Hope you guys have a great weekend. And until next time, Duffman out.